So what sort of happened here is this. Lily decided to spend her money, her $12,000 on clothes, holidays, and decorating her flat. So the question was asked, how much did she spend on decorating her flat? What will we do? Anybody have any idea how to approach this question? Now remember now, how much Lily received? Let's start from there. How much money Lily received? Talk to me again. 12,000, 12,000. Right, 12,000. So Lily received 12,000. So let's put the 12,000 there, right? So this is the 12,000. 12,000, so I write a 12,000 here. Right, 12,000, am I right? Now, remember now, this 12,000 was shared in the ratio four to what? Five to what? Seven. Seven. Now, they said that Lily spent the money on, first of all, on clothing. So the, the four, four parties for clothing, five parties for what? Holiday. Then the seven parties for what? The creating thing. Now, this money was shared among these different parts, right? So four, five, and seven, all together shared this 12 what? 12,000. So this 12,000 is for the three different items. It's not for one pair. It's not for, it's not for only clothes. It's not for only holidays. It's not for only what? Um, the creating. So what we are going to do here is this. we add the, since this 12,000 is for the three items, we add up these three things first. We are going to say four plus five plus seven, right? Now let's add four plus five plus seven and see what we get. Can somebody help me out? So four plus 16, 16 right? 16 parts, follow me, 16 parts. So this ratio can be divided into six, 16 equal parts, right? It means the ratio can be divided into 16 equal parts. So 16 parts, look at it. We are going to say 16 parts will give me 12,000, right? Therefore, what is one part? 16,000. So how do I find one part? 16, 16 parts will give me what? 16 12, parts, 12,000. So if I have one, if I want to find one part, what will I do? Divide. Divide. So, so we say what? 12,000, right? Divided by seven. Divided by one. No. How many parts here? Oh, 16. 16. Now, anybody have a calculator? Can you help me? What is 12,000? 750. So every one part represents 750. Now, the question was asked, how much did he spend on decorating a flat? Right? So let's see now. Let's go back to this, right? How many parts belongs to flat? How many parts do we get for a uh, flat? They're creating the flat. How many? Seven. So the flat, the flat as well, seven parts. So it'd be seven times four, seven fifty. Right. Now, can somebody work it out and tell me what you get? 5,250. 5,250. Okay. So this is the amount, this would have been amount for what? They're creating a flat, right? Supposing, okay, so this is the answer we are looking for. Everybody understand that? This is the answer we are looking for. This is the answer, right? Now, supposing they change the question and they say, won't find clothes. So you go to clothes, clothes will be a four. Four times 750. Somebody can work it out and tell me what to get, please. I'm just doing that for people to see. If they ask for clothes, you say four times 750, which will give me what? 3,000. 3,000. $3,000, all right? Then we move on to what? We move on to, um, so this is for decorating flats, right? This is for decorating the flats. This is for what? Clothes, then holiday. Holiday, how many, how many parts we have for holiday? Five. Five. So we say five times, so 750, right? Which you give me what? 
3,750. Can somebody add up all these three numbers for me and see if you don't get 12,000? Yes, sir. So when you add up all these, you end up by getting the ones, the 12 thousand. 12,000, right? So how do we do fraction and ratio? In this case here, we say the four parts, right, is for clothing, five parts is for holiday, and seven parts is for what? The creating. Now, if you want to find one part, you would have, because the 12,000 belongs to all the three items, you add all the three, which would be 16 parts. So it's a 16 parts, it's got to 12,000. Then you find what is one part, right? When you find one part, you can find any parts at all you want. So this is method is the best method when you're doing ratio. One part will give you 12,000 by 16, which gives you 750. Then say seven times 750, four times 750, and five times 750 for the different parts of it. When you add up everything, you get back your 12,000. Any question? Is there anybody who wants me to go over what we did a while ago? Are you good? So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to write two, two to five, right? This one is for Aaron. The first, the first part is for Aaron, and the second one is for Betty. How do I know? The first name will take the first number. The second name will take the word. Second number. Now remember, they say Aaron received what? $60. They never say they both received $60. They say Aaron. So where is Aaron? I go to the end and I do this. You see the difference now? So that means say two parts, two parts will give me what? $60. All right, just quickly, let me just answer. One minute, guys. Hey, thanks. Yeah, I got it. All right, so we have two to five, right? So the two parts is for what? Aaron, right? So let's see, we are going to say two parts, two parts, right, is equal to 60 dollars. So we want to find what is one part. How do I find one part now? Who wants to help me? How do I find one part? Divide. 60 divided by what? Oh. Which will give me what? 30. Beautiful. All right. So one part will give me 30. Now, look at what they say now. How much money was shared altogether? So for me to answer this question, I will look for Aaron's share first. Aaron's share, right? Aaron's share. Aaron's would have been what? Two, right? So it'd be two times 30. Am I right? Then okay. Betty, Betty would have been what? Five, five times 30. Five times 30. So two times 30 will give me what? Excuse me, sir. Yes, go ahead. Oh, so, sir, so I would never use what the, the 32 times you mean? The no, 60. no, no, because the 60 is two parts. And want to, you are working, re, your reference point is using one part. So once you know what is one part, you can find 10 parts, 20 parts, depending on whatever you are given. So remember that you say two parts is equal to 60, right? Yes, Therefore, yes. one part would have been 60 divided by two, which give you 30. Are you following me so far? Yes, now, yes. so we know that uh, one part is $30. Now, then you go back and they say, how much money was shared all together? So you find in the individual's one first. So I'm going to say, oh, Aaron got two parts. So two times 30, which give you the 60. Then Betty got five parts, which will be five times 30, which give me what? 150. 150. Then you add the two of them. 60 plus 150, what do we get? 210. 210. Right. So the answer, the answer here would have been one. 210. So this is one method. Listen, or when you finish, you, after you get your one part, you can say that uh, the two plus the five, which will give you seven parts, right? But you know what is one part already. So if two plus five will give you the seven parts now, you're going to say seven times what? Seven times the 30, which will give you what? Two okay. ten. Now, so I prefer if you do it by, don't, you see, when you do this, you can easily confuse yourself with the other ones. So I prefer if you do Aaron's first and Betty's one, 
if you master what you are doing, then you can do it like this. But our advice is that uh, you do it by separate, the letter add. Everybody follow that? Yes, sir. Any, yes, sir. Any, any confusion, any confusion what I'm saying a while ago? So remember mm -hmm. now, you, you find what is one part first, right? After we find what is one part now, we use the one part, one part as a reference point to find out the individual amounts for Aaron and that for what, Betty. And they still want to find out how much money was shared all together. So you say that a two times 30, which give you 60, and five times 30 will give you 150. Now, supposing they ask you how much money Betty received, all what you do is they say, Betty, I've got how many? Five parts. So it'll be five times 30, which give you 150, and argument done. Everybody understand that? So this is for the total, right? This is for the total. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So am I, am I can we can we continue? Sure, hold on. Sure. So I'm going to pause the recording first. All right. Well, so what happened? A total of 1,200 students attend Tovey High School in the ratio of teachers to students one to 30. Now, the 1,200, okay, so let's write this one first, right? I'm doing it this side here, look at it. One, they say one, one to what? 30. They say teacher, they mention teachers first. So this will be for teachers. And later they say teachers to what? Students, yeah. now I put the S. Now, look at it carefully. 1,200 students attend Tovey High School. Is there 1,200 for the teachers and the students or the 1,200 is just for the students? The students. The so, students. So, so that means that you can't add 30 and one. If you say 30 plus one, right, it's got to 31. And you say 31 parts, 31 parts is got to 1,200. You'd have been wrong. Why? Because say, the, the 1,200 is not for both teachers and what? Students. Yeah. The 1,200 is only for what? It's only for what? Students. So what we are going to do here, right, is this. Right? So since the 1,200, it belongs to what? Only students. We are going to do similar to what we did before, right? We say this one here, this one here, right? This one would have been for. No, it's not Dallas, no, it's 1,200 students, right? Now, after this, what will I do? You can tell me what I need to do next. I want to find what is one. Uh, I want to find what is one part, right? So what, what what's the statement I have to write first? What's the first there's statement? 30 parts, parts equal one. 30 parts, right. So we say what? 30 parts, right. We are going to say that 30 parts, right? 30 parts, right. Equals to what? 1,200. All right. So what is one part? 1,200 divided by Divide by what? 30. So what 30. do I get? 40. We get 40. 40. All right. Now, so every one part is 40. Now, the question they ask, they say, how many teachers are at the school? How many teachers are at the what? School. How many parts do we have for teachers? One. 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 Right. So it will be one times one. Which part is one part? 40. 40. 40. So we get what? 40. 40. 40. We say they are... So we are going to say for there are what 41. There teachers. are 40 students, no teachers. Teachers. Right. At the school, right? At the school. That is clear one. Yes. So if, if the teacher was to be two parts, you say two times one, 40, which give you what? 80. Is that clear enough? Yes, sir. Now. So not always, not always you add, right? Now, not always you add the, the ratios and later divide. When 
I want to make something clear here. Look at the first one. Everybody see this one here? The first one, the $12,000 belongs to the three, everything here, the, right? The $12,000 actually was sharing between the C, the H, and the what? D. So we could have added them in 16 parts, and we use that one to find one part. Follow? But the second one, the second one, they said that the Aaron received $60. So we use the Aaron's part to find one part. And the next one, now they say the students were 1,200. So we use the 1,230 for the students to find what is what? One part. Then later we see that one times 40, which give you 40. Then you see that there are 40 teachers at the school. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Any confusion? Any confusion? Okay, let's look at the next part of the question. Two fifth of the students own personal what? Computer. Two fifth of the students own personal computers. How many students do not own personal computers? How many students are in the school? One thousand two hundred. Now, they say, they say two fifth of the students own personal computers. The next question is, how many students did not own personal? So how will I approach this question? Two fifth. Two fifth, okay, so two fifth of what? Times 1,200. Okay, of good. One. Right, so we are doing the second question here. Two fifth, two fifth of 1,200, yes. When we work it out, what do we get? 480. 480, right. So 480 students will own PC. personal computers, all right? Now the question was, is how many students do not? We said, therefore, those who do not, right, who do not, do not own, own PC, what will you, how do you work out that now? Subtract. You subtract from what? 1,200. Right, so that being 1,200. Everybody catch that? 480. Minus 480, yes. Right, let's work it that and see what we get. 720. 720. Any question so far? So the first part, the first part, they asked for how many teachers are in the school. The second part, now they said that two fifth of the students own personal computers. The question asks, how many students do not own personal computers? So like somebody said, we find the two fifth of the 1,200 first, which is 480. Those people own personal computer. They say, but what we want to find, we want to find those who do not own personal computer. So we say 12,000 minus 4,800, which give you what? Seven and I'm out, 20. Are we clear? You follow so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So let's look at the next passa passa. The next passa passa, they say that 30% uh, of the students who own personal computer mm -hmm. also own what? Playing station. PlayStation. What fraction of students? in the class own PlayStation. So let's take it step by step. 30% of the students who own personal computers also own play what? Station. What fraction of the students in the school own PlayStation? They are looking at the fraction. Now, so the first statement would say 30% of the students who own personal, how do I find that 30% of the students who own? Sir, 30 over 100 times 482. Come again. We say what? 30 over 1. Sir, 30 over 100 times 482. Okay. So, um, anybody agree with what she's saying? Sir, yes. sir. <laughs> Come again. Sir, what are you putting in a spot? You mean anybody agree? Everybody agree? No, it meant to ask if everybody yes, agrees. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So 30%, it would have been 30 over 100 times, well, 480. 
480. All right. So we cancel this and we cancel this and that. So now, so we are doing the third question here, right? This is number three. Now, three times. So when we multiply this, what do we have? 144. 144. All right. So when you get the 144 now, how do I write? How do I write this 144 as a fraction of the students in the school? 144 over 1,200. 144 over 1, 1,000. Now, is there any way I can break this one down? Now, they said to express your answer divide in the lowest one. Well. Divide both numbers by 12. Thank you, sir. So this one here, you divide by 12, going to 12 is 12 times. And 12 going to this, what we have? 100. 100. Right? So I have 12. I left with 12 over 100. Can I break it down further? Yes, sir. Which yes, number? Sir. Which number can I go any further? Two. Can we use? Sir, can you use two? Two. Okay. Two goes here. Six, six, six times. Six, two yeah. goes here. 50. I can still break it down. Three. Two. No, three cannot go into 50. Two. Two, two goes here three times. Two goes seven. Five. So that means uh, we can make this one to what? Three over what? 25. Three over 25. That's my answer. Right. So this part here, we have this part here for number one. Right. We started number one from this side here, coming down, right? All this part is number one. Then we have number two, this side here. Right, and we have number three way. That side. And that will give you eight marks, right? Two marks to find how many teachers are in a the school. Then they have two marks for those who do not own personal computer. And you have four marks for the fraction what part are we clear yes. is, there a, is there anybody who is lost so far what we have been doing is there anybody who is lost sir for the last one sir number is sir my understanding but like if we do it i want to think for like my thing for understanding like okay it be? all right good so let, let's run let's run it one more time can we do that right so guys let's help her out right we are going to run it one more time so everybody understands. So I'm going to clean everything. I'm cleaning everything back, right? All right. Now remember that uh, we are not leaving anybody behind. Is that okay? So we try as much as possible to help whenever we can, if it's possible. So, okay. So the first thing we have to do, look at it. You have to look at it this way. All right. So we do need over, all right? Sis? Now, so the first thing we are, we are looking at, they said that 30% of the students own personal computer. We know the personal computer at 480. So I'm going to say 30, right, over 100 times 480. You cancel the zero, you cancel this one. And you multiply three times 48, which gives me 144. Follow me through. Now, the question was, they, they asked what fraction, look at, look at the keywords, what fraction of students in the world school own what playstation okay. so first of all you got those people who own places the 30 percent of them this is the 30 percent right so the reference point is to the students so i'm going to say 144 divided by 1200 you are writing as a fraction of the students good 12 goes here 12 times 12 goes here 100 then you break it down again. You can use four. Four goes here three times. Four goes here 25. So you are going to end up by getting what? Three over what? 25 as your answer. We follow? Is that clear? Is that, is that a little bit clear now? Yes, sir. All right. So... That will be for this question, right? They'll move on to the next type. So I'm exposing you to 
all different type of questions they can ask you on ratio. Can I move on to the next? Can I move on? Talk to me, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This part here. 72 minus 48, we give more 21. 24. 24. So we get back the same the, the, the difference now. So let me go over it what I did. They say the ratio of number of bananas to the number of oranges is two to three. So the banana have two parts and the oranges have three parts. Furthermore, there are 24 more oranges than banana. There are 24 more oranges than what? Bananas, right? So what we did here is this thing. We find a difference between oranges and banana. We are told that the difference is 24, so put it right there. Since we are talking of difference of oranges and banana, we have to talk of difference of their parts. Which part am I talking of? Orange have three parts minus what? Banana, which is three. But when they say difference, we mean minus. So when you minus, you get to one part. It simply means that in one part, equals to what? 24, right? Then if you want to find banana, it'd have been two times 24, which give you 48. And if you want to find oranges, it'd have been what, three times 24, give me a 72. Now, if you want to check your answer, 72 minus 48, we get to what, 24. So by the way, this is the answer we are looking for, right? This is the, the answer we are looking for. This is the focus point. But I did already this for you to understand that uh, when you work out the difference, you get a 24. Are we clear on that? So this is not done like the, the one we did before. This is done differently. But by yourself. Any question? Any question? No, sir. No. We are going to, so, okay, two minutes to copy whatever you want to copy quickly, right? Then we are going to look at a similar question like this. Sure, what you said? I said that you copy it quickly if you are copying, then we are going to look at another question similar to this, another passport question similar to this one. Okay, can I move on now? Yes, sir. Okay. So I want you to try this one for me. This one is similar. This one is similar to what we did a while ago, right? So I'll give you some two minutes to figure it out. Everybody copy the question and try it for me. The sum of money shared among three persons, A, B, and C, in the ratio two to three to five. If, if C, okay, so here now, I let something left out here, right? Hold on, where is it, okay. If C, so yeah, put C, if, if C, right? So yeah, if C, if C received 120 more than what? 
if C receive 120 more than more than B, find a sum of money share. Okay, anybody figure it out? Sir, what if I'm sorry? Okay, so what will you do? Sir, um, if C receive 120 more than B, find a sum of money shared. So one question, is the 120 for any specific person? No, sir. All right, so no, the 120 represents what? Difference. The difference between what? Which Between the two letters? B and B. B and C. So what do we, how, what do we write down? We write difference between what? Difference, right? Between? B and C. Between B and what? B and C. C, C for 120. Okay. So the difference between what? What's the next now, right? Difference Their between parts. Difference between, right? The apart will be what? B, if we C minus B, right? So the ratio, look at the ratio is what? Two to three to five. A, B, and what? C. So what is C? C is what? Five. Five. Is what? Three. Two parts. Two parts. So the difference between B and C would have been two parts. And the difference of the man would have been what? 120. What will I do with the two parts and 120? What will I do now? Two parts. Two parts equals what? 120. 120. 120. So one part is oh, by two. two. All right. So one part now. Well, give me what? 60. We good so far? Now, yes, when you get a 60 now, when you get a 60, right? 
What will I do next? They say, how much money? What is the sum of money shared? What will I do now? So you're going to multiply six by RM and add it to so, so, Right, so the A would be what? Two times one. 60. 60, all right. Then we do B, B would be cost what? Three times. Three six. times 60. Then the C would be cost what? Five times. Five times 60. 60. All right, so let's work each of each individual of them and see what we get. What is two times? Two times um, 60. 120. 120. 120 years. 180. 180 years. 300. 300. Oh. Yeah, 300, yes. And 300. All right. So now remember that we are dealing with money. So we put a dollar sign for the total, right? So we add up what? 120, 180, and 300. What do we get? 600. 600. The total sum of money shared was what? 600. 600. Six hundred dollars, right? The most important thing you understand the word concept. So when it twists the questions left, right, center, you know exactly what to do. You see that the previous question before this was this year paper. It was on this year paper. The one before this. Right. All right. So I'm letting you for more last question. And then we finish with ratio, then we jump into a new topic for today, right? Just like class, we start a new topic, then we just uh, continue step by step. Cool. Any question? Any trouble? Those who want to practice later can I can. Screenshot some you know some documents for you for you to practice. All right, at a later time. Maybe I'll do that later this evening also if I have energy. All right. So what are we seeing here? For every one cement, you need six gravel. So what I did was this: I put the four cement over the one cement part, and the six gravel. The six gravel over over the x gravel part, right? Because that's what I'm looking for. Then what I'll do, I'll cross multiply. Because it's proportional, I cross multiply one times x is equal to um, four times six, right? So one x you give me what? Twenty four, right? So x is equal to twenty four divided by one. Follow me through. Everybody see that? If you don't want to do this way, look at it. If you don't want to do it this way, you can also do it this way here. One cement will give me six. If I have two cements, how many will I get? Cement and gravel. One will give me yeah. six. If I have two, if I have two yeah. cements, how many will yeah. I get? 12. If I have three buckets, how many cements will I get? 18. 18. 18. And if I have four, how many do I get? 24. 24. Now, in the, in the exams, if you do it this way, you are correct. And if you do it this way, you are correct. Because they, there's no, they're not, they are not going to ask you for which method you should use. They don't business which method. The most important thing is they say, whatever you put down should be logic and understandable. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. So you can use, you can use the first method if you wish. You can use the first method or use the second method. Any method at all, you get a 24, then good with that. Once you're working, you're, you're, you're working shows some form of reasonability, that is good and logic. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. Anybody lost? Now, the second part is more interesting. Look at what they say. If 20 buckets of sand are used, Right, how many buckets of each of the following will be what needed? Now, when you read the same things, they are comparing two things. They are comparing sand. We are going to compare sand and cement, and later they compare sand and what? Gravel. Gravel. Right. So, let me change my the color of my list now. Let's go. We let's use red now, right? Just to differentiate what we are just doing. Red. I need red. Uh oh. I need red color. Good. 
Uh -huh. Now, so for the second part of the story, they are comparing, we are going to compare sand and what? Cement, right? Sand and what? Cement. So let's go to the ratio. Sun, so remember that the sun is what? Well. S is for sun. To how many, how many? Sun, cement, how many cement? One, right? Yes, sir. So for, for cement, for sun, will give me one word. Cement. cement. Okay. So for sun, give me down. What they say now? If you have 20 buckets of sun, so if you put 20 here, if you have 20, how many what? How many cement you want? You put X, then you cross what? Multiply. Everybody see what I'm doing? Look at it this way. Yes, you have you have one to four to six. This is cement, sand, and gravel. So the first part, they say sand, you take this sand with the cement. That's what you are comparing, sand and cement. So you write first sand for sand from the ratio itself. For sand will give me one cement. So you put that one down. Then later on now, you are going to put the sand part, 20 sand here. The 20 sand, you put the 20 sand here, right? Then you have one, one cement and it'll be X cement. Then you cross what? Multiply. So when you cross, you're going to get 4X is equal to 1 times 20, right? So you get 4X is equal to, 4X is equal to 20. So you say X is equal to 20 divided by 4. X is equal to what? Five. So five. if you are, so if you have one, if you have four, what? If you have four, if you have twenty five. buckets, if no, if you have twenty what? Buckets of cement. You need what? Four bucket, five buckets of what? Cement. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Or, or what you can do? You can say one cement will give me four sun. Look at it. One cement will give me four sun. Two cement. What do I get? Two cement will give you one. If you have two eight buckets sun, of cement, eight sand, eight sand right? If you have three cement, what do we get? Twelve. 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 So then, if you have four cement, what will you get? Sixteen. Sixteen. You get what? Sixteen. Sixteen. Right. So and if you have five, what do you get? If you have five, we will get what? 20. 20. Right, get 20. right. So, so as I told you, you can do the working part, or you can do this way, and it's still market for you. The most important thing is you show some form of logic thinking. All right. Now, so how will I do the last one? The last one is sand and what? Gravel, right? Sand and gravel. So here yeah, now, you are going to write sand and gravels. We will go back here. I'm going to have to do it at the top. Where can I put it? Can I put it this side with different color? No, let me do it at the top so I don't mix up anything. So uh, we can do it over this side here. I'm using different color for the last one, all right? Which color should I use? Green. Green, okay. Oh, the color gone a while ago. All right, so we're using green this time. So here now, they are comparing sand and what gravel. So I come here, I have what? I have one to four to six. Sand, sand, cement, sand, and gravel. They are comparing which one? Are? They are comparing um, sand and gravel, sand and gravel. So for sand, it's got to six gravel. Everybody catch that? For sand, it's got to six gravel. Therefore, if I have 20 sand, how many gravels will I get? I put X gravel. That cross multiply, right? So that have been four X is got to um, six times 20. Right, so before x is got to 120, right? So x is got to 120 divided by four. 120 divided by four, what do I get? 30. 30. 30, right. So that means x is got to what? 30 what? We get 30. 
gravel. Dirty gravel, gravel. right. Right. We get dirty gravel, right. So I hope you, you get the idea, right? The, the, this last one, most students couldn't do it because they couldn't reason it out. It's not like the normal one. It's a ratio question, but it's not like a normal type of ratio question we used to, to do, all right? So you just have to have an open mind and you have some form of reasonability. You can pick up things left, right, center, okay? So this would have been the, the end of um, ratio. Uh oh, okay. So guess what? Our next topic is going to be changing the subject to the formula. Why I want to do this topic quickly? Because this is one area in algebra you need to know so that you can apply in all different types of mathematics in your different areas of the your subtopics you need to know for CXC, right? So it's critical that we know that. So what I'm going to do first of all, we are going to watch, I know that's almost time, but we are going to take our time and watch one simple three minutes video, right? And then later I'll just explain some few things to you. Then tomorrow we're going to do to we do everything step by step tomorrow. We cool. So for the meantime, um, if you have not written your, if you're not here last week, ensure that uh, you write your number, your WhatsApp number in the chat for me, okay? So that we can have it, so we can just add you tonight. So tomorrow morning, we're, we're good to go. And I'm going to make up the Google Classroom and send the, the video for tonight there and the worksheet, this PowerPoint, I'll send it to you guys too, right? So who want to use it for later? That's your business, all right? Okay. Can I come out of this now? Can I come out of this? Hello, can somebody talk to me? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So. We are going to continue. We are going to continue with um, what you call changing the subject of the formula. This is not. Hey, somebody can I finish? Okay, all right. I'll go back. Okay, thank you. Okay, so go ahead and just um, finish up. Whoever did not finish, please, you can do so.